What's up guys, Tommy Bowie here from Movie Rewind and to welcome to the next instalment of the History of Comic Book Films and today we will be looking at the comic boom, a period from 2000 to 2005. So without further ado, let's get into it. So firstly, you might be wondering why the background looks different today. It's because I've had to move where I do my videos because my room is being decorated at the moment. So this should be the only video in which I am in here. However, I can't really guarantee that I won't be in here in videos in the future. So by the 90s, comic book films were in a very strange place. The dark era of comic book films, which lasted during the 90s really destroyed comic book films reputations and put off studios from having any involvement in them because studios didn't understand that comic book films didn't just have to be for kids and what we got was a lot of cheap and cheesy comic book films such as Batman and Robin. Now by the end of the 90s comic book films were starting to slowly come back especially with the release of Blade which really showed that you could mix genres. For instance, Blade mixed the horror genre and the comic book film genre into one. And studios were starting to see that you could do this. However, it weren't until the year 2000 that a lot of comic book films started to be brought out to massive critical and financial success. Now the film released in 2000, which I'm going to focus on first, is of course X-Men. So during the late 1990s, Marvel Studios went bankrupt and they sold off a lot of their properties to different studios. And one property which they did sell off was X-Men to 20th Century Fox. Now, after quite a while in the production period, X-Men decided to hire Brian Singer to direct the film. Now, X-Men, a lot of people say The Avengers was the first team up film. However, X-Men really had a lot of characters in it, which all needed development. And not only did X-Men show that comic book films could be a critical and financial success, it also showed that contemporary issues, which were very relatable at the time and even now, could really be shown over comic book films. For example, the X-Men film really did show the effects of prejudice and discrimination and how a persecuted group can really start to hate and despise the group who they're being persecuted against. So X-Men really did have a lot of contemporary issues in it, which related to a lot of people when it was released. And it still relates to it now. Not only this, however, X-Men, it was a more darker, it weren't exactly gritty. However, it was a darker portrayal of the X-Men comics. And to be honest, I think X-Men was a really good start. It showed that comic book films could really win over critics, fans, as well as the box office. And this started to show other studios that maybe comic book films were not dead after all. So probably a film which had just as much, even if a more significant impact than the first X-Men film was of course Spider-Man, released in 2002. Now Spider-Man is my favorite comic book character. However, what the Spider-Man film showed was that these films could make millions. Spider-Man was a massive success at the box office and it held a record for a time. I can't specifically remember what that record was. However, it did hold a record at the box office for quite a while. Spider-Man was a comic book on the screen. It was just like a comic book and it played out like a comic book and everyone loved it. Yes, people might say now that it's cheesy, it's a bit goofy, you know, it's a bit colourful. However, Unlike films released during the dark era, like Batman and Robin, Spider-Man still had quite a gritty and emotionally realistic atmosphere. I mean, the final fight between Spider-Man and Green Goblin, you could never see a film like Batman and Robin try something like that because it's brutal. It really is brutal. And its sequel, Spider-Man 2, released in 2004, was an even bigger success with fans and critics. So these Spider-Man films really did show that comic book films could be a massive success and you could really just take comic books and place them on the big screen and fans would just love it. So I really have a lot of respect for the first two Spider-Man films because they really did start the ball rolling. Even though X-Men was the first one released, it was the Spider-Man films, in my personal opinion, which really started getting the ball rolling and a lot of studios would start adapting comic book films in the future. So the comic book boom saw 
hundreds of comic book films being released and the majority of them were successes. However, one studio which of course took a little while to kind of um, get the ball rolling was DC. Now DC, you know, in the age of the Titans, which I've previously talked about, had massive successes with Batman films and Superman films. However, during the comic book boom, Marvel was really starting to overtake DC as the primary um, distributor of comic book films. And after a very poor Catwoman film starring Halle Berry, DC finally got their spark back when they released Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins in 2005. Now this film, and I'm going to discuss this in a future video, had such a massive impact on the comic book genre because even though it was adapted from comic books, it was set in a realistic and down-to-earth world. Now after the hilarious mess which was Batman and Robin, Batman Begins was dark, it was gritty, it was realistic and it really did show that comic book films could really rake in not only massive money, however, be very successful with critics. So Batman Begins was a more darker and grittier comic book film which would have a massive impact on comic book films in the future. So you might be asking, if the comic book boom was so great, then why did it start to slow down? Well, it was for a lot of reasons that the comic boom started to slow down. One of the main reasons was that a lot of these early films such as the Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man trilogy and the original X-Men trilogy, while the first two films were really good, the third film in the trilogy used to really not be well received by fans and critics alike. And because the idea of a cinematic universe like Marvel has today was kind of in the workings, however weren't really a massive idea yet, comic book films really started to just release solo outings in their own universe and it kind of started to slow down. There was a lot less Marvel properties, a lot less DC properties in which they could adapt for and a lot of lesser known superheroes such as Ghost Rider getting comic book and film outings. Now the comic boom I think is one of the most crucial times you know in the history of comic book films because it really did start the massive you know people think that comic book films are like the primary focus of the cinema world today but it really did start with the comic boom. Without the comic boom and without making them kind of in people's minds again, you really wouldn't get what we're getting today. So I give a lot of thanks to the comic boom because it really did have such an impact on the genre as a whole. So in conclusion, the comic boom was such an interesting time for comic book films. A lot of the elder, older franchises, which might now not be as well known, really did take off during this period. And thanks for watching guys, I really do hope that you enjoyed this instalment of my history of comic book films. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. And I will see you in another one. See ya!